So now we're heading into Sin's Fortress. Interesting place. Um, it is never properly said who this Sin is. He's never given a, an introduction of any sort, so I... I'm not sure how to feel about that. I, What's the lore behind the Snake Man, anyway? Um, well, Sin's Fortress itself is designed to be kind of an obstacle course because it is the final test for the undead to prove that they can make it to, uh, make their pilgrimage of sorts to En Orlando, the city of the gods. So I guess these snake men were put here in particular to kind of challenge the, uh, the undead. This area is much more of an obstacle course than it is an actual, like, a uh, standard area. Because the enemies aren't so tough, and they're not like... I can't parry that biting attack, unfortunately, so I'll have to just backstab him. These guys aren't particularly tough to parry, it's just the fact that... The one attack they have can't be parried sometimes, so you have to like just worry about that bite. Because I believe he can grab you as well, I'm not sure. That, and if he falls down below, so if the fall doesn't kill him... What, go what is down there below will in fact kill him, because the entire floor is covered in tar, so his movement speed will be greatly reduced that, and there's a bunch of Titanite demons down below. Luckily, those guys die in one hit from my trusty lightning spear, so I have that to fall back on. Whoops, I to trick my, uh, change my healing spell, there we go. Now you're going for, like, a illusionary wall or something, man. But yes, uh, there's a tar pit down there that will only make you... It will slow you down unless you have the um, rusted iron ring, which I showed off later on, earlier on, actually, that uh, will make your movement normal in the viscous liquids of below. And the only reason to go and kill like the Titanite demons down below is purely to go get Demon Titanite early on in the game, which... There is, uh, thankfully, the, like, the only benefit towards, like, the, uh, Demon City of Isolith. Like, the only benefit that has it, it has the only not respawning, uh, Demon Titanite Demon in the game ever at its entrance. Which is used to upgrade boss weapons, by the way, if you were wondering. If you want to make a weapon from the soul of a boss, well, that's how you do it. The sad part is, though, most of the boss weapons in this game aren't that good. They're usually not worth it, yeah. You have a few that can be... Huh, <laughs> that guy fell off. I love that. But yeah, this part being incredibly full of traps, you have to worry about rolling boulders. So if you're a fan of Indiana Jones, you will know how to avoid these. <laughs> the one saving grace is that they do, in fact, hit the uh, enemies as well, so... At least you have that to fall back on. Most of the traps in this dungeon are also, uh... Able to be, you know... The enemies are vulnerable to them, too. I can't get this enemy to come out. There we go. Haha, -ha, there we go. Yeah. I just realized, in my drunken state, this area is extremely similar to the Earthen Peak in Dark Souls 2. Except here's where I'll uh, give, like, an admins. I'll admit that, uh, compared to, like, a lot of, like, the ravings of Dark Souls 1, I don't like it that much. But I'll admit, like, this area is done way better than it is in, uh, Earthen Peak, which I admit for an area for Dark Souls 2, it's. Not that particularly... Oh, shit, I was too close to the wall. Yeah, Earthen Peak is a bit more cryptic. There is nothing in the game that tells you to burn the windmill. But you have to know to do that unless well, you want to fight fair, the boss. There is, like, a sort of area that you can, like, walk on. So it's, it's not like, as opposed to, like, oh, you just have to know. It's like, okay, here's this little small area, so if you know to walk on it, you'll get to it. But, yeah. Yeah. At least in this area, it's more opposed to, like, uh, it's, a, the whole point of the area is to be able to, just to test you just to get into the city to begin with, so I actually, like, for lore purposes, I do like this area more so than Earth and Peak, honestly. Yeah. It is interesting that they chose Earth and Peak to bring back for Dark Souls 3, because, um, 
In that game, you visit the ruins of the Earthen Peak, and it's kind of uh, all broken up and spilled out. All the poison is spilled out and whatnot. Speaking of which, I just played that DLC part of Dark Souls 3, and just to let you people know, because I'm drunk as hell, I fucking hate Dark Souls 3 and that DLC. By the way, if you saw what I did there, I waited for the, the stones to stack up, and I used it as a platform to get across that hole. I feel like we're not conveying, like, a, a consistent, like, energy to the people with me being drunk and you... Oh, it's all good, you know, I just, um... Just talk about what you feel, you know, don't... Okay, okay, don't, uh, good. Yeah. Because the only thing I got on my channel, I think, is a Dino Crisis thing. Still got hit by that. I think still is on there, what I did years ago. Yeah, I was telling him for the longest time to make more videos, and this is kind of the, the opportunity. Uh, I think if I was going to do Let's Plays, I think I thing. might do Let's Plays of Monster Hunter for the PS2, maybe, if I got a capture card or something. Yeah. They're not too expensive these days. I got one for um, older systems that would work. Oh on, yeah, uh, right. I think I think you fifty dollars. I think actually. you asked me to get one for you for like uh, when you're in like Super Smash Brothers group. I like, did, and I actually I, I gave it to that group actually. That was a splitter I told you to get. And, oh yeah. okay okay. Oh. You ended up getting the wrong type, but uh, you, did, you didn't know any better, so it was all good. You took what, what? I got the wrong type. What? Yeah, it was a different kind of splitter than what I needed. Fucking technology, man. That, 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 that shit ain't my fault. That's yours. I, I, I... So, up to this point, you've been seeing treasure chests in the game, and uh, if you are RPG savvy, if you played Final Fantasy or a game like that, you might know that some treasure chests are not what they seem. As you may notice by this chain being a different shape, and the fact that if you look very closely. This chest is breathing. You might know of the phenomenon known as the Mimic. As right, as what these are. Although Dark Souls can never make a, like a, a fair move without being bullshit at one point. At least it's not like Dark Souls 3 where the Mimic's uh, grab hitbox is behind it. I mean, that's a little bit bullshit. I'll give Dark Souls 3. The Dark Souls to, like Mimic is actually sort of unique, if at least a little bullshit, but still. Yeah, it's not so bad. It's, it's, it's one of the better parts of the game. But yes, that Mimic gives you a lightning spear. Not my miracle that I'm equipped here, but a literal spear with lightning equipped to it, so it's not a bad weapon, honestly. Small tip, don't stay on the elevator, because there's spikes up there and there's blood on the elevator, so put this two together and... Be quick about it, yes. Also, if you're, like, summoning people for, like, this, for, like, any sort of unknown area and they're rushing it, don't always follow them. Because that's exactly what happened to me with this area. If there's, like, a dude who was, like, rushing the entire way and I was trying to catch up to him and I had no idea about the elevator and I just basically dropped and fell to my death. Yeah, this is a better area to solo, honestly, because the boss is quite easy if you ask me, so... You could even just you could just get the summon like Tarkus. The NPC could... of this area can solo the boss. Yes, he's and, right. And if you do it right, he he can make the fucking boss fall off the edge of the map. Yeah. Play some Smash Brothers, get some ring outs. Oh yeah. So this room controls the boulder controls. As you can see, it will knock down this uh, enemy that we saw earlier. And will knock a hole in the wall down here. The only problem is you have to do this area over again if you choose to do so. Because apparently, like, the thing decides to move itself on its Yeah, the, the boulder mechanism here will move its itself. I don't know why it does that, but it will in fact... I would believe that there's, like, a snake man up here pushing the damn thing. Like, I, I could see that, but uh, it's just... It's never shown, so you don't know that. Down here is the final, I would argue, the final use of the master key if you have it. That guy's still alive, holy shit. And if you don't have the master key, if you travel up the uh, fortress some more, you can eventually get the key to actually unlock this guy's cage. It's not very out of the way. Now, if you know if you know where the bonfire is, you can at least like get to it and get the key and then go down. It's no big deal. Yeah. 
If you don't pick the master key as your starting item, don't worry too much. It's not going to hinder you that badly in the main game. It's just kind of a convenience. But yes, this is a uh, sort of a master wizard kind of person. And we will uh, free him from his imprisonment. As you can see, he has quite the large uh, headgear. Can't you see his face for a while there? Oh, yes, you can. If you kind of. Oh, angle I never that could down. figure that out. Oh, that's what he looks like. I've Fairly, been trying to uh, do that for. I didn't know you could do that within his cage. Oh, man. Kind of a senior citizen looking. Uh, Yeah, he is kind of the master when it comes to uh, magic in general. So if you are a wizard build, you want to rescue that guy, I would have to say. There is one thing I do like about this, out here. this game is that in terms of like magic builds, it does allow you to like be more versatile with your magic. Because in this game, a lot of the different uh, effects that usually you wouldn't use in any other game... You can actually find incredible use for this game, so... Like, for example, like, uh, the one for fall damage and stuff, you can you use that a lot. And there is one in Dark Souls 2 that does help, but it's not as... It's more situational, yes, you're right. So there's more use for it in this game and stuff, so... In there's you you could you like put all your, that and the all the spell slots for all your magic. Most of the time, all it takes is just one. In Dark Souls 2, some of them usually takes up like two or three at most. Yeah, indeed, that's true. So even though for like if you're going for like a magic build, most of the time you're going to have to go for a spell sword type of thing because you're going specifically just like straight magic. You're going to be weak very early on unless you get like some sort of magic weapon or build one, some type of thing. That is until you get to like the uh, blue light, moonlight crystal swords, or whatever the name is. But until you get that, oh my god, the damage you do with that when you upgrade it all the way. Oh. My problem with this game versus the other Souls games is the fact that there's no way to upgrade, or no way to um, restore your magic spells. So early game you have to fall back on the use of some kind of melee weapon because if you don't do that you're gonna be SOL basically that's why I don't like wizard builds as much in this game versus Dark Souls 2 or even even Dark Souls 3 or especially Demon Souls where magic is kind of overpowered um, admittedly especially in like in one boss in Demon Souls where it's like the fl flame lurker or whatever they do the, the, basically, a lot of people raced that boss who were, like, physical builds because they had no idea how to deal with that boss. But if you're, like, a wizard user, that boss was, like, not as bad. Because most, most of the time, you're, like, away from the guy, like... And even then, he was still challenging. You you, 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 you died to him one time, I believe, when you were playing... Uh... Yeah, but that was, like, my fault. That was, like, being, like, too greedy and stuff. Yeah. he He's a decent, challenging boss. That's why I like him. But, uh, yeah... I don't like that in this game you can't restore spells through any means. So it means when you're playing as a as a build like that, you kind of have to uh, fall back on a sword or some kind of melee weapon early on. If you don't do that, you're going to be, as I said, kind of SOL, generally speaking. Actually, that reminds me, I never actually tried this earlier in, like, Demon's Soul, but I know I tried this, like, in Dark Soul, because there technically is a way to do wield weapons, but your right hand always does more damage this... than your left hand. So your, also... your left always does the same attack, so you can't really do much with it, it's not nearly as versatile. Okay, so is that the same case for Demon Souls, or...? Yes, until okay. Dark Souls 2, that was the case. This area used to always piss me off because I always I used to aggro all the enemies, so I was getting oh, stuck yeah. in a corner and like. Yeah. 
I do like, like, parrying in this game, though, as opposed to the other games, especially, like, more recent games, because with, like, more recent games, all the attacks become, like, more ridiculous and, like, hard to frickin' organize. The timing is much more strict, too, yes, Not to mention, there's right. a bunch of fake-out attacks that always just piss me off. At least in this game, like, there's a way to, like, actually time the attacks. Indeed. Unfortunately, I'm not getting any drops from these guys, but you get some pretty good weapons that you can actually manage to get them to drop an item. Oh, yeah. They're not very strong, though, so... And there is a thing I do like about, like, I both in Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 1, at least if you know where the enemies are and you know basically just how to deal with them. This area can be just basically no problem for you as long as you know what you're doing. In more recent games, for me at least, is just that you, you can know where the enemies are and you know how to deal with them, but the problem is there will still be, always be like gimmicks around the area that will just fuck you over. Indeed. At least in this game, it gives you more of a fighting chance with the gimmicks, at least. Yeah. Because... The gimmicks in Dark Souls 3 and not necessarily in Bloodborne, but in like more specifically Dark Souls 3, it's more like they they will instantly kill you and have no chance of like seeing it beforehand. But in like these games, they they won't kill you, but they will do a lot of damage. So it's like more like you have to explore your actual environment around you, then figure out oh crap, this is what's going to happen to me. Yeah. The other games, oh no, fuck you, you you did you didn't know what this is? Well, too bad. Yeah, a lot of people kind of stereotype Dark Souls 1 as like, this game that's really hard, and it's hard on purpose, but it's not really the case, it's it's, it's, a, it's a definitely a challenging game, but fair, it's, it's not game bullshit. Presents, yeah, to be fair, each game presents their own challenge, more or less, because Dark yeah. Souls, I will admit that Dark Souls 2, like the base game that was originally released, well, is easier than uh, the rest of the series. However, there is still uh, a challenge, especially in the Scholar, uh, Scholar for Sin edition, where there is at least still some challenge. Much different enemy placement, yes. Exactly. Now up here is a guy uh, who wants to ruin our entire day by throwing bombs at us. That, that's no fun. So we're going to equip this uh, flame resistance ring instead of this, because... I mean, who in their right mind wants to throw firebombs at a poor, unsuspecting knight just trying to make his way up in the world, you know? What kind uh, of shit is that? Donkey Kong. Well, I mean, he's not throwing barrels at us exactly. To be fair, the barrels catch on fire and they can, like, be become alive and stuff. That reminds me, you guys should play... Donkey Kong uh, 94 is it? What, what's what's the Donkey Kong with like a, it's like a different game? It's a really good game because it, it's like the original Donkey Kong, but you can like it has all these different aspects to it. It has like um, it has different uh, levels, and you can like do flips and all that. So it's kind of a cool. I have no idea what you're talking about, dude. There's a Donkey Kong game on the Game Boy Color. It's like it's like uh, Donkey Kong '94 or something like that. And, and like the, the first I thought you were talking about like Donkey Kong Nintendo '64, which is the most oh, insane collectathon to have ever existed. That's ever. true. Yes, it is. Oh my God! The amount of things you have to collect in that game. Oh dear Jesus! Holy shit! He's right. I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna have to take a drink from him. <laughs> Yeah, I, I played that game when the demo came out. That's how old I am, dude. Back in the day, before oh. the game was even released, I played the demo for Donkey Kong 64. But no, Donkey Kong, I believe it was like 94? The first four levels are the same levels from the first Donkey Kong game, but after that, it becomes kind of its own individual game. It's kind of a cool... It's kind of cool like that, because... You get this new experience that kind of stems off of uh, the old, you know, Donkey Kong arcade. So we're gonna face a giant here for the first time. Now, how do you kill a giant? Well, that's easy. Just wait. You let it throw a temper tantrum first, and then you hit it a few times. 
right in the back of his skull. Yep. And then you kill it. There you go. These guys will drop Titanite chunks, I believe. Yes, they will. And that one in particular never respawns. So you don't have to worry about... Actually, um, they, they all don't respawn as far as I Except know. for the one that drops the balls down the shaft. I know you can kill that one. I do know that. I think he does drop something. Yeah, he just doesn't respawn. He does respawn, so it's a little bit tougher to uh, deal with him. But uh, you know what I mean. Okay. Now, we can face the boss right now, but I do want to go ahead and spin some souls, and there happens, to, there happens to be a shop in this part of the game. The most inconvenient shop ever. Indeed. He is right. We're going to go ahead and weigh ourselves down a little bit. Get some uh, leather armor on. Video so game jump. physics, son. Oh yeah, at their finest. Interesting yeah. story about the giants. I actually managed to find like the other one, like the one who like pulls the gates open. And once I managed to find it, I actually managed to actually fairly kill him without actually doing the uh, hiding behind a corner and waiting for him to throw a temper tantrum, then kill him tactic. So even though he almost killed me, I managed to get that guy back. But as soon as I did that, another like a Havel guy came and invaded me. He went all throughout the Sense Fortress trying to look for me, and unfortunately, I couldn't do any damage to him because I was a magic build, so I... There you go, first try. Couldn't do jack shit to him. Uh, funny story, I have him, when me and him were playing this game, me and uh, this guy actually played the entirety of Dark Souls uh, 1 co-op. And I kept missing this jump over and over again. <laughs> he, he, he made it on the first try. <laughs> So yeah, we have a salesman here, who is, by the way, floating off of the ground. He's quite psychic. Oh shit, I never noticed that. It's a floating man. Obviously he's doing some sort of sorcery. <laughs> but yeah, this is the Crestfallen Warrior. What's his lore? Love the PV1 Piranha? He's one of the people that tried to take on Sin's Fortress, but ended up failing and uh, resigning himself to If he failed, how is he still alive? Uh, he probably gave up, I would have to guess. That would be my... Uh... Okay, so basically he couldn't jump over the, the one little corner without dying, apparently, I don't think. Evidently, that would be the case. Let's see here. Do I have any souls to like break down? Because I would love to have that uh, stone plate yeah, ring. I I yes, I yeah. do. Perfect. Because this um, oh, wait, this thunder is... stone plate ring is quite integral to our next. Especially um... for like a later boss, is the an infamous boss. Actually. Oh yes, one of the most infamous bosses in the series, if you ask me. Those of you who were. Dying of anticipation for the drunken revelation, it's actually just Ornstein and Small. Yes. Which at first, when I first fought him, I first I didn't think there was anything big with like any big deal. I just thought people just like got pissed because they had no idea what to do. Then I tried fighting him. Like I killed like the big fat guy first, then actually killing uh, Ornstein last. Then I forgot. To, oh dear God, this is a nightmare. And I raged. <laughs> also, I had help from other NPC players, so that probably didn't doesn't count. But yeah, as long as you know what you're doing with that boss, it shouldn't be as big of a problem. But it does present its own challenge, as far as I can. By the way, down here is something interesting. Is a bonfire. oh yeah, this is a, a, a bonfire. A lot of people miss because they have they don't even think to look down here. I have missed it myself several times, so don't feel too too bad if you miss it yourself. That's just a. Uh... To be Fact fair, I think life. this is like the most fair, like, hint type of thing, because there is a sort of an open area for you to look over, but... So even though you could say, oh, that's bullshit, I could have never looked there, but it, to be fair, it's like the most, comparatively, the most fair hint it could have gave you, like, where you, you see, like, gates everywhere around, there's, there's like this one area without a gate, so... And as you all know, 
Even when it comes to Dark Souls, we are, in fact, nameless stones rolling as far as the eye can see. I can't remember the name of that, or the lyrics of that song, but I, I just recently figured out that, um, Miss Brina Palencia did a, did a entire English cover of the song Stones when she played the character Misa in the Rolling Girls, a recent uh, anime I've watched. I haven't finished it yet, but um, it's kind of cool because if you watch shows like Love Live, even in the dub version, the uh, the Japanese actors. I fell, by the way. <laughs> no, the the, the uh, Japanese actors Thank will. Thank God this was on Dark Souls Two. That would. Oh God, me. yeah, Dark Souls Two would have <laughs> killed me right there. <laughs> You have to get the cat ring in that game just uh, to survive. Yeah, I, I, this is one of my least favorite Dark Souls games besides fucking Dark Souls 3, but there's one thing I can definitely say that is, like, the least, like, worst part about Dark Souls 2, it is the fall damage, because, oh, yeah. god. When you drop down to get to the gutter, even with the cat ring, it still hurts. <laughs> Damn, that is some fine-ass mod you got there. Like, oh, oh yeah, the 4K uh, resolution tower shield is quite nice. And unfortunately, my computer isn't good enough to render that, so I don't know. No, you don't. Wait, no. he has an Estus? Yeah, he's not allowed to what? use it, though. He got the great axe, cool. I didn't know he had that. Why does he have an Estus? The only person allowed to Estus in this LP is me, motherfucker. I am not allowed any of that. I have seen so many pull it, like think like like enemies with Estus. I have never seen that guy pull an Estus ever. He, what? he does it sometimes. That, that's how he does. <laughs> All variations of that enemy will occasionally like to pull out the old chug a lug. But uh, as you can see, I was having none of it. But yeah, no, he's, he's right. The fall damage in that game, even with the cat ring, when you fall down to go to the gutter for the first time, holy One shit, One foot breaks dude. your ankles. It's like Half-Life, yeah. Is it? Well. Because I, I know that the Half-Life fall damage is, like, a bit ridiculous. If you fall, like, one inch above, like, the required, like, amount before you take the official fall damage, you do lose 10 health, but I don't think it was that bad, honestly, because with, like, Dark Souls, it was like, oh, that's half your health. Yeah, and Dark Souls too. yeah. Now, here, if you want, is the great and glorious oh, Iron Tarkus. Yeah, boy. I am not going to summon him, though, because what? I want to fight this boss solo. Oh, uh, you, you, oh, pff, you a hater. I feel bad, though, because he is a great summon. He is... Fantastic. He will probably help you. I I would say again, no shame, no shame at all in summoning Iron Tarkus. In fact, the best strategy for you to, if you summon Iron Tarkus, let him do all the work. Oh yes. The fact is, he is much more of a badass than you will ever be. He is in one fact, of the greatest he, he could, summons he would in the, solve entire the entire Dark game Souls. For you. Yes, if he was in the game, he would probably solo the entirety of it. As you can see, he the Iron Golem here is getting quite. He's getting drunk. He's uh, sipping on too much of the Jack that we're doing tonight, so... It, it's sad, because I actually like the design of the Iron Golem. Just the fact is that he staggers way too easily. It's just, eh. Yeah. I honestly like the boss fight, but it's just... Eh. He can grab you, to be fair, which is quite... The uh... irony is that he's the easiest part of Sin's Fortress. Yeah, he is. When he's the boss fight. So that's just a... Uh... Oh shit! Yeah, here it comes. Oh, he grabbed oh, me. Oh boy! He's gonna slam me down. Oh. All right. Well, I'll, I'll take it. I'll. I, I know that that grab can be devastating, so I'll take it. To be fair, though, from software never learned grabs, <laughs> like hitboxes ever. Indeed. Okay, we have returned. Uh, gotta watch out for that grab attack, seriously, because it can be quite devastating. No, if I think about it, there is, like, one of the most bullshit things about this boss, even though he's, like, he would be an okay boss, he wasn't okay stagger, if he didn't have that, like, it, it was, like, he was perfectly, like, okay for him. I think that's the only way for him to, like, one-hit kill you, unless you're yeah. under level, and he doesn't throw you off the edge, but besides Because that... even that shockwave attack hasn't one-shot killed me before, that I've, even when I've played the game anyway, so... If you have decent health, he's not so bad. You can see I didn't dodge it this time. 
At least it's not a Marth grab, because... Yeah, oh my man. god, yeah, you, you, you played as Marth when you played that game, I yeah. never grabbed as Marth, because I'm just not good with grabs and fighting there games we go. in general. Yeah. Although you are quite good with the counter-attack, oh, I will say, yeah, when, I, that, when I watched that was you play. I with that thing. That was the main, uh... You were good at the timing on that, as because if you... As bad as fronts are with, with, like, grab hitboxes, at least they're not as bad as the Marth grab box in, like, melee. Yes, indeed. So with the uh, defeat of the Iron Golem, we get a sort of a special delivery here. Why do? And the package is us. I do Gurk Goyles. Okay, here in in Sin's Fortress, I do admit it does sort of make sense. Like, okay, you passed like everything, so you passed the trial, so you officially gain access to like the An Orlando. So I it, actually, it makes a little bit more sense than. The in Demon Souls, where it's like, oh, you killed the false idol. Oh well, well, here you go up top. By the way, we're still trying to kill you. Yeah, at least the enemies. There were gargoyle enemies in that game. In fact, the boss you had to fight to get to that false idol, or get past the false idol, was a pair of gargoyles. Admittedly, it was one of the most bullshit bosses in the game. Oh my god, that was hard, dude. That was fucking tough. The only reason it was so is because of the fact there was like a narrow freaking walkway you had to walk through and the It was a bridge! Yeah, you yeah. fought them on a bridge. They could, they could knock you the fuck off. The, 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 the attack they used was kind of like Wrath of the Gods. It was like it would just knock you 20 feet back, and if you weren't careful. By the way, these guys will not bar bother you if you do not uh, bother them. They're sentinels. Provided you don't get close to them. Yes. The Sentinels of Anor Orlando. Technically, they're supposed to be giants, but they're, because fucking from software retcon giants several times in the season. Yeah, giants are weird. Giants are two different races, if you want to go that far. They're a certain race in Dark Souls uh, 1 and 2. In Dark Souls 2, they have, like, holes for faces. It's, it's really out of the... it's just weird. There is a theory that they're supposed to be like a different type of like giant, or they're like they're nature giants, and these ones are more like human giants. Or yeah. Something. And technically, Dark Souls Three supports this. Because they have both types of giants. Yes, they do. But to be fair, that's more like because of the fact in Dark Souls Two it was made by a different team entirely without the. Uh... It had supervision, but it didn't have the the creative direction of Miyazaki. Yes, you're right. And the third one was basically like a combination of both, like yes. the director of Dark Souls 2 director. And he Dark was co-directed by uh, Hidetaka Miyazaki and Yui Tanamura at once, so it had kind of both of the ideas colliding together. But um, for now, I'm going to end this part in Orlando. We're going to we're going to explore the city of the gods next time and see what uh, see what lies ahead. And uh, this is one of the best parts of the game, so I'm going to be having a lot of fun with this part. But uh, until then, this has been me, Love Game, and my lovely guest. Genius at work. I'm too drunk to spell, so don't you dare tell me how I spell my name, you assholes. <laughs> until next time, farewell. <laughs> <laughs>